Hello folks, welcome to Amateur Hour, where we will get started right after I test this microphone. Thank you. We will get started after the mic test, is what I was going to say, and I cut myself off. So let's get started and stop fooling around trying to learn how to make videos on somebody else's time. Bear with me, folks. It's fun, though, but uh, uh, amateur. So, let's get to the red meat, why you are here. And that is this, the anti-gravity butterflies. That is, is that nonsense or is that, what do I say here? We're going to go over this Twitter moment here, which is linked below. Anyone can look at it. You don't have to belong to Twitter. It's a public web page. And you will see it's a bunch of tweets that I'm going to talk about. And... It is called Anti-Gravity Butterflies. Solid theory or absolute nonsense? Be honest with you, I don't know myself. I have a, I lean toward myself, but um, I think there might be something to it. Yes, uh, yes. And as usual, anti-gravity is in big ironic finger quotes. And we don't mean it literally. Uh, in my case, I believe that, uh, you know, these UFOs, UAPs, clouds, balloons, certain objects, certain things in nature like our friends, the butterflies, the birds, the beetles, some of the bees, we're going to see bees. Uh, they, uh, they have photonic crystals involved in their, in their makeup, like the wings of this thing we're looking at right here. And they, they pull light in and they blow it back out. Now, does that, is that how they get around? Do they completely ignore Newton? I don't know. We see them waving their wings. Sometimes it looks like they're catching uh, some air in there. Sometimes they, I don't know, they uh, have unrecognized signatures. But let's just explore it and everybody have their own opinion. So, let's go. I think that's enough for the intro. So, this uh, came about, well, this first tweet, some guy's on Twitter and he says to another guy, Hey, uh, you know, I saw something a couple months ago about a butterfly or something. I don't know what he said. He, uh, he put his account private. Oh, there he is, Linus. So Linus uh, Jarbo, maybe Yarbo, I don't know. He was asking somebody, did you see this or that? And then I saw it, and I'm like, no, you were, that was, I think he meant me. Um, and it was me. And, uh, oh, okay, so I went back and showed him some an old tweet that, yeah, you probably saw this back in April. Meanwhile, it was June, late June, when he was trying to remember what he saw. I'm saying he saw this, where I was commenting to NASA Ames, that being the Silicon Valley office of NASA, NASA uh, about wings. They're trying to copy some wings. Good idea. And I'm saying, hey, you want some better wings than that? Those are bird wings. A flexible wing that changes shape as it flies to make air travel more efficient. And I'm saying, you may even be able to make it more and more efficient. Like this, with photonic crystals, like the butterfly or a peacock feather and some other things we'll see. For various reasons, it might be more efficient. It's going to, you know, reduce your, at the very least, it'll reduce some drag because all the light sucking and blowing out that occurs around these photonic crystals is at the very least, in my opinion, going to lessen the drag because there's not going to be any air in that area. It's going to be taken up by wavelengths of visible light in this in these cases here mostly visible some heat 
some inf uh, UV, IR, that sort of stuff. Just normal, typical stuff. So I go on and I'm talking to the stoic giraffe and uh, Linus here and I'm saying I haven't seen this butterfly aspect for a while now but left off with the African swallowtail is probably the best example. And here's a link here to uh, Google something, Google Scholar Search. Oh no, Google, regular Google. And it, it says, uh, you know, I'm not the only person to raise this question. I just push it further. They're saying all these reputable sources, not a tinfoil hat, are saying, hey, they have light-emitting wings. Wow, it looks like a light-emitting diodes and stuff like that. And I'm saying, you know, and they, they'll, they will always go back to signaling, mating, uh, things like that. And I'm saying they're doing more. That's all. I'm, I'm surmising. And I'm saying like this guy, I don't buy it. Or this guy. I don't think so. Anyway. And I go on and say, this has to do with my theory that butterflies may be pumping light, mass equivalents, for propulsion. And I give them a link to a thing that goes on and explains it in extreme, mind-numbing, boring detail, which some of you are familiar with. If not, that's why this thing is linked below. You can look at this stuff. To your heart's content, follow me on Twitter, ask me a question in the comments, the YouTube comments, etc. So, so yeah, I'm, so I'm telling these people on Twitter, yeah, yeah, this, is, this was me saying that, and it has to do with this that I also say, etc. And they kind of know me and sort of remember me and that, and uh, whatever. That's how they interact over there. And... Uh, that's the end of that little part of the story. So we're collecting tweets here on these things of that conversation and other conversation. And this is a random tweet from a science girl. And she is also on this trail to an extent. And she's talking about how the scales covering the wings reflect incident light repeatedly at successive layers. And this is interesting. Some species are visible to the human eye up to a, mi a kilometer away, kilometer, kilometer. So, gee, that's a lot of signaling just to get a mate, huh? You know, uh, that's interesting. Maybe there's more to it. And I'm going along here again, back again with Linus and the stoic giraffe. Uh, you know, just telling them what I went through looking at this in the past and I say I don't buy it typically their color changes are for mating and signaling where is that guy I don't buy it anyway and I give them some scholarly articles here which are great and uh, yeah I think uh, well, that's a PDF. You can read these free. I, well, not that one. Sorry. Some of them you can, some you can't. But you can always read the the uh, abstract, the highlights, the conclusions, so to speak. And they're uh, for free. And the, these guys, you know, they don't go as far as I do. They're scientists. They have to be very conservative. I don't have to be in this instance. And... Um, They'll tell you that there's a mystery there. What's it, what's it, you know, it's unsolved, so curiosity is there. And here, here is a couple of, this is a link to the authors, this is a link to the articles. If you really want to dig into it, you'll see what they're saying. And, <clears throat> you know, these, uh, these science sites like phys, phys.org, physics.org, they're writing articles about it. They summarize these papers and put it into language that people will read on the internet and look at ads and things. So, 
this uh, this article is about how great these wings are. What a coincidence! Not only are they light, ultra black materials. That means very absorbent of light. And um, they uh, they are also light in terms of mass. So light pumping and light light trapping effect. Um, it's an optical illusion. You can read this for yourself, of course. And well, it goes on to confirm what I've been saying, so that's why I put it here. Huh? But even if you think I'm full of it, eh, your curiosity's range uh, raised. What is it for? It's a lot of effort going into this something. And here we have an article about a photonic crystal the size of a single free wavelength. That's a lot of effort for quote unquote Mother Nature or evolution <coughs> or intelligent design to go through just to paint a butterfly so it can attract a mate. That's really going all out. I mean, you know, that's laying it on there. But I think it has other functions, is what I'm saying. And again, light through mass, it's mass equivalence. So it's, in quotes again, thrusting to an extent. It's pumping like a submarine does, like things in nature do, like a squid does like a, an air-breathing thruster does, a scramjet, things like that. Well, that principle seems to work. A jet ski does it. A jet boat does it. Could you do it with light? I don't know. Let's think about it and explore it. That's what, I'll, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm saying it works. Of course it does. I'm right, et cetera, and so forth. But I think in nature... You can see it. I think I have archetypes or archetypes. I'm not sure how to say that right. Uh, right here looking, staring at me in the face. Like also these hummingbirds. Now those have suspicious signatures. I'd like to see the U.S. Air Force explain that movement. Because, yeah, sure they beat their wings very quickly. But if you just look at them, sometimes they just drop down. They seem to drop quicker than gravity would allow for it, if that makes sense. Like the, our friend the Tic Tac, where is that? Dropping from 20, 68,000 feet or whatever it is in 0.28 seconds or whatever that was. So, I've seen that with butter. Yeah, I think I see it. You know, it's like saying I think I see uh, a leaf falling from a tree accelerating in gravity. I think I see it. 32 feet per second per second, whatever it is. I'm pretty sure I saw it, but, I, you know, you have to go to the Leaning Tower of Pisa to see that for sure. But, you know, I'll take it on their word. But these things, I don't trust them. Again, is it Newtonian? I don't think so. So, and here I start making fun of, I guess, the military or the threat narrative, so to speak. Which, I think is good. I think it's true. I think there's, you know, that's their job. And, uh, you know, you don't want uh, Navy pilots running into UFOs and getting injured or killed. So, <clears throat> to go on with these hummingbirds, if you look into them a bit more, you will see that their eyes and their brains, they have, they have more visual cones and brain capabilities. In other words, they can see this light, uh, you know, a wider range of light. Okay, that's, that's convenient, you know, to, for mating and hunting and whatever they do, you know, chasing insects. 
But it's also convenient if you're floating on it. If I'm out in the ocean swimming in a wave, I'd like to be able to see what's coming. So, is that part of the deal with these things? I don't know. Read this thing and see what you think. Again, I'm building a case here, but you know, how far uh, am I stretching it? I'm not sure. But if I do know this. If I was a bird like this bird, and even if I didn't believe in this anti-gravity, and especially Kelly's theory on it, I might want to have a little bit of, you know, saying here, like this guy here, he's thrusting right there. But wouldn't he like to have less air resistance like these hypersonic missiles are trying to do and that thing that the alien scientist talks about i think his name is leak marabou that could be wrong you know they they put lasers on the front of missiles and things to push back the light and destroy it and break it up loosen it up well what if you had that built into the into your wings like these guys do that's what I'm talking about. Get, get better gas mileage there, folks. If you're a bird. But it just may be for signaling. Hmm. How convenient. Here's another bird. And we're seeing it is iridescence, which is one way of putting it. Uh, from another angle scattering that light see when that light scatters it's going to get that air away from me and it's also the mass equivalence and we're pulling it through a little bit it just helps you know these things are obviously believe in Isaac Newton I think and uh, but they take a little help from Albert Einstein huh corny but maybe maybe a good way of putting it I don't know so let's go on to this bird and look how they call it blue for some reason but look at those beautiful colors there that green reminds me of a plant it's absorbing everything but green it's pulling everything through there but green and uh, using it for photosynthesis, but this guy's just pulling it through there to get a nice, smooth, iridescent advantage there. Maybe. Sure looks like it. Photon, look at it, you know. Hey, read this article for yourself. I mean, this is a step up in rigor from me. And... A lot of you probably want that. And it says here, photonics engineers are paying attention and <laughs> nanoscale crystal structures that their feathers only reflect blue. I'm not sure, you know, these feathers are blue. Are they reflecting or absorbing or both? I don't know. I'm not going to mince words on that right now. And I made this argument on Joel with one of Joel's tweets, and you UFO Twitter types recognize him. And I think we all agree with Joel, quote, anything that points back to answers from nature just makes me happy. It's all right there in front of us, and I'm saying this mystery of anti-gravity, I think, is all right there in front of us. And I'm telling somewhere else, bugs, birds, and butterflies understand it, but shaved apes do not. I am here to change that. Well, if I'm right, and anyone listens, maybe I will change it. Next, birds, dazzling iridescent, tied to nanoscale tweak, a feather structure. Now, what are all these stealth, you know, wings and uh, hypersonics? Are they tweaking nanoscales? Why or why not? 
Is this guy worried about getting hit with radar? I don't think so. But he's certainly... Certainly toying with light on a nanoscale. Is that going to give him a little, just a little edge? Yeah, I think it might. We got off. We got off onto the off the butterflies onto the birds. Back to the butterflies, because I think they're the best example. Uh, like this one. And this one, this is interesting to me because this image is, you know, it's another butterfly picture. All right. Note the damage to his wing. All right. I hate to see that. But Michael the Texan tweets, also interesting reflection on the shiny leaf. So look at that oddball color on that leaf. To me, of course, I'm looking for what I want to see, but I'm seeing, you know, they, this could be just the camera, okay? I understand that now, now more than I did before. It's not, not actually literally that color, but the fact that it's reflecting, it's probably refracting, but whatever. Um... That odd, you know, it's something. Something's going on there. How about that? I'll leave it at that. You know, it's not that much of a camera. Uh, trick of the camera. But I'd like to look into that some more. I'd like to see more images like that. So. Now, moving on down here, we get into this we're still on the butterflies here. And this guy, he put out a big tweet not long ago, January 10th. Today's February 5th about, um, about butterflies. And a lot of it has to do with wings here. And, um, uh, pardon me. <clears throat> and, uh, you have to look at that for yourself because it's pretty long and it shows all the different wavelengths and chromosomes having to do with wavelength. It doesn't it doesn't say what I wish it said, but they'll get there. You know, they're scientists, they're not philosophers, they're, they're they want just the facts. Sometimes they ignore the uh, they'll speculate about purpose, reasons functions, etc. and so forth, but uh, they're busy enough. They have me to make wild speculations for them. But, you know, look at that. Okay. That's some nanophotonic high-tech stuff there. Whether we recognize it or not. Well, it is anyway. No matter what I say, it's uh, it's quite beautiful and fascinating. If it turns out it's just for signaling mates, well, I got to give them a lot of credit for going out of their way for that, you know, to this level. So, let's go back to where we were because that's a long thread and uh, you should look at it. Now, this is another tweet but I can't click on it because the guy, I did I put it in my last video, and he has a copyright on it. And he didn't strike me, but he did, uh, well, you can use it if you allow him to put an ad on your video. Which, I haven't seen the video yet, it hasn't premiered yet. But I imagine it's, not, you know, unobtrusive, it's just one more ad on YouTube. It's just my first go around with that. So I want to see what it looks like before I do it again. I'm still learning the rules and I, you know, I don't want to do anything hasty. It wouldn't be hasty, but the last time I did it, it was hasty. And I got a, a an, uh, well, that's how you learn, anyway. So let's move on to this beetles here. And uh, these beetle wings are also 
doing something similar here. This ultra white. And you UFO types are looking at a look at that tic tac looking white on there. That means it's gonna absorb and reflect every bit of visible plus whatever else it feels like. So these guys are suspected tic tac mimickers. And you uh you UFO types Imagine these people if, I don't care if they're 20 years ahead of us or 2,000. They're not stupid if they are what we think they are, whatever, or who knows what's going on there. So they're going to look at nature. Why wouldn't you do that? Problem with this UFO bunch is they're too sciencey. You know, nothing wrong with it. It's a backup. You use that to check your... Uh, presumptions but you got to look at the bigger picture folks the bigger picture the big picture okay so where are we and that tells you don't be so you know so a lot of people like to talk about human and hubris and and things like that well have some humility and learn from the bees now this guy, he learned from, he saw something with the bees, um, and he's questioning it. He's a scientist in England at Cambridge, a student, PhD student, and he's studying bees for some reason, and um, he's looking at them there. They're there in the light. Look at him flying around, zzz, buzz, buzz. He shuts the light off, <gasps> they fall down, why? Wouldn't they, you know, why don't they gradually come down? What's wrong with these people? He's saying, surely that's more dangerous than keeping flying. So he's wondering why no graceful glide to land or anything like that. They just literally stop flying and plummet. And here comes Tinfoil Hat Kelly with a response saying they were, they're light pumpers. They're high on vis, visible light, V-I-S, when their supply got cut. So they go in cold turkey and, uh, you know, they fell flat on their face. So that's <laughs> possibly, okay. He's going to try to gradually dim the lights. He's going to try some other things. But he asked for a bunch of, he, he asked for why is that, and uh, he got, you know, look, 563 responses, and he responded to a lot of them. I gave him this, and he didn't respond to it, which, that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but, when that happens, well, I forget, why, you know. Uh, I don't care I'm, but I'm interested to see why see what happens with this because I suggested to him you know I uh, that uh, I forget what I forget that let's keep moving now here's another article from the digital traveler who's very interested in this you can see his Twitter avatar is a blue morpho, also, I, also known as an African swallowtail. But, uh, they're both blue. I'm not sure they're the same because one might be South American. The morpho, unless they're on both continents, I'm not sure. But <clears throat> apparently that's the best example are these blue morphos and swall African swallowtails have the most highly developed photonic crystals and the most noticed uh, most if not all butterflies have it but th these ones are getting the uh, most notice from science and, he, and digital traveler notices that fizz.org noticed that somebody else noticed that, hey we can use that for solar panels this uh, is capturing light and moving light. 
uh, we should look into that instead of just using you know silicon or whatnot and I have a whole opinion about that but I'm not talking about that yet so have a look at that if that intrigues you because this is energy I'm saying that yes we can use it to uh, improve flight if not create quote unquote finger quotes irony anti-gravity you can use it for other things too like perhaps the solar panels and you're going to use those in space too wouldn't it be nice if your spaceship was not only collecting it energy to pump around itself where is an example of that but also there's a better example of that here somewhere also yeah that's it pulling it in pulling it through pushing it out twisting it around for a bubble but say you're out in space you're doing that just to get around but you can also pull in the ambient light pretend the sun's over there somewhere which it probably is since we can see this thing and it's making the electricity if you want it to or the optical control within the thing to control these little cells that are doing this for us see you put function on top of function pretty soon you're thinking like an alien scientist or an alien itself so so then I go on here to say well yeah that's what we should do here with this metamaterial angle and that's another video that I just premiered yesterday that had the butterfly wings in it. Uh, the butterfly video that got, had, has to be monetized for the owner, which is fine. Um, so go look at it. I'll show you the thumbnail for it in a minute. Just to make sure you do that and don't forget. And here's another time we're winding down here, I think. Yes. Here's another tweet, you know, that's the same, that's right, that's an article on that same scientific paper mentioned above. So you'll see, look at that, look at that extreme detail here on what it's, on the light it can pick up and the chromosomes it's using to do that stuff. Wow, seems like a lot, like a quote evolution went through a lot of work you know just randomly just, just happened out of thin air this nanotechnology in these butterflies okay yeah maybe the aliens came and put tinkered with their D dna i don't think so all right i don't buy it and i don't think so so Back to our program. Boy, that's a lot of effort, though, isn't it? A lot of effort. Okay. And to close out on an even w more whacked out note, I'm wondering if these, these things in the sea don't do that sometimes because you see them absorbing and emitting light. And I, look at this guy here. You know he's. You know he's got the pumping system down because he's doing it mechanically, pulling in the water and pushing it out. And a squid does the same thing, only more like what I'm saying with the jets and things like that and the uh, scram jets and the air breathers and the light breathers and things like that. Sometimes some of these underwater giz creatures uh, do things like that. I'm just starting to really look into that. A little more as if I don't have enough whacked out ideas but some of these things you know they're phosphorescent luminescent whatever and you just wonder why if they're getting some of that effect you know is it is it lowering their drag in the water is it changing their mass using mass equivalence in a gravitational field underwater I don't know 
So, uh, closing down, I guess. I was a little tweet tweeting uh, this, pushing this YouTube channel. And another one with a little light bubble diagram on there. This is an animated GIF. Now there's another, there is a video with that as the thumbnail. And that explains why the drag, see that light coming in and going out and going through. Uh, how that might push air away in addition to doing other things. And I think this, yeah, this is the one that, look, there's the air molecules. They, they're not going to fit in this thing. This is graphene. And that's too small for this stuff to get into. So not only is it, that doesn't look too small, but it is. That's, you know, not the scale. But, and some of these light wavelengths here are going to push this stuff away anyway. So they have no business being there. They don't want to be there. They don't need to. Because it's all taken up. Oops. It's all taken up by these photons, which are 6,000 times bigger than this piece of the metamaterial here. And, um, you know, it's just a whole blanket here. A bubble. A sheath, if you will, of light there. That's pretty much indisputable. Uh, yeah, so let's go on. That's why balloons float. That's why clouds. See that hydrogen? That could be another gas in a balloon doing this. Or in a cloud of water, which, as you saw in the beginning, can be snow or ice. Uh, heavier than air, of course. But when it gets that light through, going through it, like I hope it does tomorrow when the sun comes back out to melt the ice off my windows of, of the car and um, lift that stuff back up into a cloud and out of here. So, you apply that to a bigger object. And you do it at scale. Where's our bigger objects? There's one. Okay, it's controlling this, this thing. Someone designed it to do that. I'm saying we can do that. All right. And I keep saying winding down, and there's another tweet. Uh, yeah, here's another one. Of the, uh, of the butterflies. And they're messing around with the genes on these butterflies to get them to change what they absorb and pump. Okay, some of the males prefer the ultraviolet. The females prefer the infrared. You know, ladies' choice, I suppose. So they're screwing around with the genes on these things to make, uh, to flip those preferences. Now, here's a beetle. And this beetle has a photonic crystal all over it. Another suspect. Look at the details on that. Now, when you want your... Wouldn't Ames want their wings covered with this stuff if it does what I say it does? Of course it does. It wants its whole skin covered with it. Now this guy's still using Newtonian. Probably. Maybe. They look like they do beetles. But they move too fast for me to uh, judge that. I don't know. Let's have a debate. So. Look at this bird here. Uh... It's just beautiful, but it may be be functional, you know? For every bit of beauty on there, you're seeing pure function of some kind, I think. At the very least, if it's not getting any quote-unquote lift from it, it's getting um, a little bit of drag reduction. All right, perhaps. 
And the stoic giraffe closes the original conversation with Linus by saying, thank you, amazing. Because, you know, I didn't come up with it. I see it in nature. I'm not the one you need to thank. But, thank you for enjoying my videos. Like and subscribe. Push the thumbs up. The likes. And uh, I think that's about it with this, this, um video which was called anti-gravity butterflies and so i have a couple other windows here oh uh, this is upcoming attractions that's what i'll do now now upcoming attractions look for a video coming on this and that like and subscribe join up a oh, look at these old ones some of which i just mentioned uh here's an upcoming one about terahertz tails, Oumuamua propulsion, which I think might, it works more like what I say it does than a light sail. To me, a light sail is a drifting raft going nowhere with no thought, it's going with the current, it's not doing anything. A pump is more, well, first off, you're in space, not on it. Like you're in the ocean, like a submarine is in it. It's not floating. It doesn't have a sail on the surface. So that's like a misnomer, in my opinion. And when you start thinking of it like a pump, like this, then you'll get somewhere. But that's going to be another one. And this might be another video, too. I don't know. This is my last one. Go look at it. This means it's time to play the music and get out, I believe. What else do we have here? Anything? Oh, we have this. Fair use. Okay. Hopefully, we didn't tread on any toes. But you never know until you upload it, and then they, they tell you. They check it for you. And I got my first notice. That's why I'm... I'm uh, hesitant to play that one thing again. Although they were cool about it in the end, you just have to agree to get, pay them for it by ads, which makes sense. So. What? All right. Whoops. Don't want that. So let's go back and finish up. How do we do that? We start playing some music and we leave. Thank you for coming. Come again soon, etc. Thank you. Tell me what you think.
de los, de los ayuntamientos de la isla? 